Good morning, afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen, all in crypto here and welcome back guys for what is going to be nothing short of another jam-packed daily cryptocurrency market update on this fabulous Friday and this is going to be a bit of a saucy one as we're going to be starting the video off by looking at a congressional hearing and we're going to be hearing from Richie Torres in regards to his grilling of the SEC and he really sort of scrutinizes them over their use of the term digital asset security and we had news a few weeks back or a week or so ago that the SEC essentially have retracted that statement and apologized for using it. So we're going to be starting the video off there. There were some really interesting things to come out of this congressional hearing yesterday. We're really going to be focusing on what Richie Torres has to say um, there was also a number of other speakers. You know, the SEC, I'm glad to see it, got a really hard time yesterday. But what he says here is very interesting. And then we're going to be talking about how there are breakouts absolutely everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. It is, um, I think with the Fed lowering interest rates, that was quite a pivotal point for the markets because they got a concrete answer, having spent this year largely readjusting and being uncertain in regards to uh, forward footsteps that the Fed, the largest central bank and thus the largest provider or uh, factor in global liquidity um, was going to make. So our plan is very much coming to uh, into effect. The altcoin market, ladies and gentlemen, is about to do spectacular things. Certainly for the remainder of this year, October very much set to take place into next year. You know, you're going to see, I, I honestly think some people are going to change their lives in the next year or so that's ahead of you. If you want to find out what I'm buying and where, uh, do consider becoming a Patreon. We are also venturing into some crypto-related stocks, but we have altcoins that we think are genuinely going to 100x in the right sectors like deep in and, and things like this. But ultimately, the Fed really sort of set the tone for the markets. And this is the past 14 times the Fed have lowered interest rates. And you can see 12 of these times the S&P has gone on and given you uh, pretty positive returns. And we're expecting a similar thing to take place today. Obviously, the anomalies here were 2017 and, and, and 2001. And that's obviously on the back end of the dot-com crash and the uh, sort of mortgage-backed securities blow up. Just before we dive into what Richie Torres has to say, I always see people going back to 2008 or 2000 with the rate cuts and saying, Oh, well, it's going to happen again. And what they're fundamentally missing is the events that caused 2008 and the dot-com crash or the telecom dot-com crash. And this is an individual saying, here is a Chicago Fed report from the 11th of, or uh, the 30th of the 11th. So uh, November the 11th or November the 30th, 2007, saying the economy was okay for 2007 and forecasts did for 2008 and the great recession started essentially the next day we are fundamentally in a different situation to what we were back there unless you think you're going to have mortgage-backed securities blow up again because of the over leveraging and the shenanigans that went on there we're in the clear it, it, i'm unsure whether there's people out there that are just very sort of not positioned in the markets and would like to it's kind of like millennials waiting for house prices to crash they will eventually, but they could, you know, house prices are going up. And, and, and actually, this is one thing we've looked at to give us that kind of broader confidence in regards to being as bullish on the markets um, as we are. So let's dive into what uh, Richie Torres has to say. And then we're going to be talking about breakouts everywhere. Pretty positive signs on the markets. I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic and then we're going to get into this clip. The SEC has a pattern of using the term, quote, digital asset security. Uh, Mr. Gallagher, does the term digital asset security appear anywhere in any statute enacted by Congress? Uh, thanks for the question, Congressman. Yeah. Uh, not that I know of, okay. not, not until you enact legislation. Okay. Does the term digital asset security appear anywhere in any rule promulgated by the SEC? No, sir. Uh, does the term digital asset security appear in any precedent by the Supreme Court? Not that I know of. Okay. Does the term digital asset security appear anywhere in the two million pages of the Federal Register? Not that I know of, okay. unless the special purpose broker dealer no action letter was in the Federal right. Register, but I don't think it was. So if it appears nowhere, neither in rule nor statute, did the SEC invent the term out of thin air? Um, 
they certainly created it. I don't know if it can. In fact, in, in a recent court filing, the SEC apologized for using the term Correct. digital asset security because it's misleading. The Wow, well, I had to share that, and that's what I meant by it. it was going to be a rather saucy one. Some saucy comments there from Richie Torres, and, 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 and right comments. You know, the SEC has done nothing but stifle this industry, and unfairly, uh, they've not protected consumers in, in, at any point in this, in, in the various or the numerous crashes that have taken place. And of course, this was the SEC in a recent court filing actually um, admitting that uh, the use of the term crypto asset securities, the SEC is not referring to crypto assets itself as the securities, rather the SEC as rather as the SEC has consistently maintained load of nonsense since the first crypto asset Howie case, the litigated, the term is a shorthand. I mean, you know, there, there, there's calls from Tom Emma, you know, there's calls from lots of people to sort of fight against. And I, I think he's on his way out, in our opinion, unless maybe uh, Harris wins. And then there was rumours, whether that was made up by the opposition or not, in regards to making him the Treasury. But he, he needs to go at this point. You know, he, he's done nothing but stifle this industry and damage America's role as a global leader. Uh, this was another clip um, from Rep Davidson. We're not going to play it. We can maybe talk about this uh, on another occasion. Uh, it talks about the SEC under Gensler's leadership has willingly undermined the ability to uh, custody digital assets. Uh, and then we spoke about the, the, the kind of nonsensical nature of comparing today to 2008 or certainly looking at the Fed speech yesterday and saying, OK, they said the same thing in 2007. It's nonsensical, in my opinion, to do so. So things are breaking out everywhere. We know that Bitcoin is in a pullback and has been in a pullback that the altcoins have just capitulated under since March. We have said with the surgence of Bitcoin, you're going to see Bitcoin dominance roll and you're going to see altcoins really start to outperform. We're starting to see that. Lots of altcoins broke out from their initial bases, came back to support, and now they're bouncing off it. It's amazing how news and technical analysis kind of, um, or technicals can, can often predict good news to come. And, 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 and we're certainly getting that. But Bitcoin has just been in a pullback. We've got lots of technical patterns, bigger technical patterns that see Bitcoin go significantly higher. We've got fundamental reasons. We've got cross-market reasons. We've got every reason to expect Bitcoin to go significantly higher, certainly to 130K, 151K, and then potentially 309K. And we did a, a video looking at the, the manner that Bitcoin's setting up here, put a toe above highs, pull back consolidation before continuation. Um, it, it's a great time that we've got ahead of us. And we've also got smaller technical patterns. When we spoke about breakouts, you know, this is Bitcoin in the kind of uh, broadening wedge that it's been in. And you can see just what we're seeing here. We've got a smaller pattern. Your split is right around here. You've broken out. You're now coming to the right side of this channel. You can see this move coming into a bit of resistance. So you're likely going to push for it. And once you clear this, it's, it's all systems go, ladies and gentlemen. But this pattern, you're probably looking at around about a $84,000 Bitcoin. You've broken out of this. We looked going into FOMC. And this is one reason we were confident. Uh, this is the, the US 100. There's lots of this setting up, which I think is a continuation pattern in a broader uptrend. Uh, and you're potentially looking at this going from 19,700 all the way to 23,400. Certainly Bitcoin signaling in that direction as, a, a, as an attachment to risk, although we looked at BlackRock's um, article yesterday or report yesterday saying that it's actually an anti-risk. So we think this is on a broader uptrend. NVIDIA was another one that we looked at. Again, I think NVIDIA is likely going to $184, um, currently at uh, 117 The SPY doing something very similar, isn't it? Potentially looking for that 6241 SPY has been a great, great chart for us. This is just going to see continuation of broader uptrend. People are constantly, people look at an asset. Don't ever be that guy that looks at an asset and goes, it's done really well, so that means it's it, it's not a it's, it's not going to continue to do well. Well, if he's done well thus far, there's a reason for it. Until you see technically the reason to say, okay, doesn't look so hot here. Don't bet against the trend. It's the it's the most simple rule when it comes to technical analysis or understanding the markets that people just ignore due to, again, oh, well, the Fed said this in 2007 and then 2008 happened, so that's going to mean it's going to happen again. No, the context is entirely different. You know, um, we, we use the pig's fly analogy. Uh, micro strategy we looked at. Micro strategy did some interesting things. Michael Saylor talking about coming up with a way to sort of gain yield on Bitcoin. I mean, this is a great chart, really, wasn't it? Um, 
you know it's certainly in, in regards to the market mastery course that we teach you see sort of four phases of a market consistent again i think this is going high i think micro strategy could double what's bitcoin going to do under that context certainly we think it's going to double and then some in regards to the technical patterns that we have we've spoken about tesla got laughed at for this but just like we got laughed at for amazon calling it down here in the 120s at one point <clears throat> It nearly doubled and we think it's still got 261 to go. What's what's crypto going to be doing under this context? Obviously, you've got Tesla. 505 is what we think this is getting to and then likely going to see broader continuation to the upside as a result of this. You've got altcoins doing exactly what we're expecting. You know, if we if we zoom out, AVAX is one that we've looked at. Breakout, retest, continuation. You've got this all over the shop. Chainlink's a great one. Breakout, retest, continuation. Uh, this is what's to come. Sol looking strong. You know, Sol we think is going to go to around about the two thousand dollar mark. Uh, I recently started a position with Sol. I was looking. I was actually long Sol at the seventeen sort of dollar range, but capitulated just in time for it to go on this massive run. It is what it is. Something like H bar coming off that support. Um, you know, you've got lots of coins that look great coming into sort of support, acting exactly as they should do. Obviously, Amazon, we've spoken about Total 2 and how we believe this is getting to $3.8 trillion. You've got to be in it to win it, guys. And all of this is going to be permissioned largely by the Dixie, the direction the Dixie's heading in. Volatility on the Dixie coming in. Um, ultimately, the broader trend for the Dixie is to the downside. And there's a number of reasons we think that fundamentally and, of course, technically, and, of course, when we cross-analyze the Forex market. So the stage is literally set. The picture couldn't be a clearer one from a technical point of view. And fundamentally, obviously, what you had with uh, Wednesday was the Fed saying, okay, we're going to start. And, and, and in his speech, he very much reiterated the fact that, okay, now we're starting an easing cycle. Um, the only thing you could say wasn't easing is they're going to continue to run off their balance sheet, but they're not really running off their balance sheet because it's mainly persistent. And obviously, the Treasury is, is gobbling all that up or, or, or it's coming out of the reverse repo, um, which is a whole different topic. So breakouts everywhere, guys. Hang in there. The time is upon us. Um, let's get ready for an amazing sort of uh, October, November, December into next year uh, and see where we are and see how many of these price predictions come to fruition. Um, it's going to be very interesting. You know, I think largely the hard work's done. Again, if you want to take your journey a step further, find out what I'm buying, get in on some of our 100Xs, do become a Patreon. On that note, guys, I'm going to love and leave you. If you've enjoyed the content, like us, appreciate it, so as a comment, and I'll see you all tomorrow in, in tomorrow's daily market update. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in tomorrow.